I'm John Barclow and I'm the Senior Product Manager of Hunting at Sika Gear and I'm here to talk to you about some considerations for when you get that bull down. So I think the first thing we should talk about is no matter if it's a Roosevelt or a Rocky Mountain Elk, these are huge animals. These are seven, eight, nine hundred pound animals and so you have to consider and plan how you're going to get that out of the field. How many people are you going to have with you? How far can you realistically go off the road and get that back? What time of year is it? Is it going to be warm weather, early season archery hunting? Is it going to be later season when it's cold and maybe you can set the meat out? What kind of predators are in the area? Are there wolves or grizzly bears? Things like that that you have to consider as well as like what is your physical fitness? So I often see people, they're like, yeah, I'm going to go eight miles off. We're going to backpack around and they're not prepared to get that animal out. They're clearly going to waste some meat, you know, so you have to think through these things. Um, are you going to bring llamas? Are you going to have a horse packer that you can call or in reach? Um, these are all things we have to consider because I tell you, no matter how many times I've killed a bull elk and I've walked up to it, every year I am just stunned at first at the size of these creatures. Now, once you start to process that animal, considering where you are, again, if you're in Montana, vice, maybe if you're in Arizona, how are you gonna process that? I think when you're in an area like Montana where there are apex predators running around, I strongly consider that you know how to do what's called the gutless method. So that's basically how to pull the four quarters, the neck meat and the loins, out of the animal without actually opening up the abdominal or thoracic cavity. Now, if you are going to open it up to say pull the loins or you want to pull the heart and the liver, one thing I like to do is I like to have the meat either on the packs of the guys that are with me or I've shuttled the meat several hundred yards away from the kill site. And then when I do open up that animal, I open it up, I pull what I need to from the inside and I immediately walk away from the carcass. Oftentimes when you see a bear come in or wolves, they're gonna go to the carcass. That's where the smell is. That's where they wanna start. They're not actually gonna go to the meat. So if I'm already 400 yards away and I've got it hanging in a tree or me and my buddies are already carrying it out in one load, um, that's a good thing. So you have to consider um, distance. You have to consider how you're going to get it out. If you're going to carry it out, how many loads and how ethical are you going to be that you don't waste any meat. It's going to be far more critical in the early season when temps are warm or depending on the state, if you're down in the southwest, when temps are warm, you want to get that out and into a cooler. Vice, if you do it later in the season and say it's a rifle season and there's snow on the ground, when you can hang it, you can go back to the truck and maybe come back the next day and get the rest of it. These are things you need to consider because once that animal is on the ground, once that bull's on the ground, it's food and we need to treat it like that. And ethically, we need to be able to manage ourselves and we need to consider what we're going to do when we get that bull down this year.